It actually took 17 years. And one of the reasons is this. Can anybody see the end of the tunnel? No. Now, £2,000, you can find it. <laughs> now they built it for me then. They dug it for me then. And guess what happened? It didn't match it. It didn't, it, they missed all right, they missed by 38 feet. So we may bump as we come against the joint, now we won't. Uh, they, what happened was, uh, the people who were building at the time, um, the, the clerk of works was a guy called Nicholas Brown. And he was cheap to run, so the mill owners wanted him here. They're very inexperienced to go wrong. Work stopped, they were sacked, and Thomas Telford was brought in. And what he did was not a problem, he said, I'll put an S-bend. And that's what he's done, he's put an S-bend right in the middle. Now this tunnel holds three records. Do people, anybody know what the records are? The longest. This is the longest, it's three and a quarter miles long. So, if we set up now, we'll get there about ten past three. It's two called the Pennine Lake. It's actually Manchester. As we go. So 1811, yeah, they built the tunnel, but they had to get a boat through it. And does anybody know how you get a boat through with no engine? They legged it through, before. <laughs> mm. yes, they, they, legged, a long time. they legged it through, but they didn't, as a lot of tunnels throughout the uh, system, they didn't leg it by lying on top of the boat with their feet in the air. They actually put head to head on the front on a plank and they walked across the, the side of the wall, two, two people at a time, and dragged the boat through, through the, with their feet. And bearing in mind it would take four hours to do, it was cold, it was wet. Um, it wasn't very pleasant, and sometimes you had 20 tonne of manure on board. So for four hours it wasn't that pleasant. But they did get professional leggers in to pay them more than six, would you believe? And they got it down to three hours. Yeah, three hours to get through. It takes us two hours with, a, with, a, with an electric engine boat. If you look ahead there, you can see sort of black on the, uh, on the tunnel ceiling, and that is actually soot from trains. Because what they decided to do in 1840 was to dig 38 holes to our left hand side. And the reason they dug there was there were construction passages, which we'll see one today. And they dug the holes to the side, they brought the boats and the way it falls in, they dug the holes and they brought all the rubble out. And to our left hand side there is two the huge railway train, railway uh, tunnels. When we built it in 1840, it was such a good idea and worked well. Is your plate with a number on it? Yeah. Uh, what's the number? Uh, five, five, five. 105. 105. Yeah, they're called legging plates or chainage plates. And the legging plates, when the guys were coming down there, they were looking at the tunnel ceiling, they could see where they were. Number one is at the other end, and number 108 is this end. So when they come here, they can see 105, oh, we're nearly out now. So yeah, by 1910, uh, because of these three tunnels now, we have two tunnels to our left hand side which are disused and don't work anymore. On our right hand side, you hear the same rumbling, that's working today. So we had four railway lines all together running, two in that one and one each in that one. But as they came through in 1840 with the boats, they had their face full of smoke as well. And they could actually see the train go past them. But all the commercial stuff went in, 19, in the early 1900s. And by 1944, the canal actually shut by an act of parliament, which were in its original state. But you can see these patches of red, as we saw coming in. They were 1919, late 1990s, the brickwork that was done the restoration of the tunnel, which was eventually opened in 2001. Also, what we're going to see is Staffordshire Blue Brick. And the Staffordshire Blue Brick was done by the railway company, and by that time, owned this place. Um, and they picked up with the we still see loads of shots of it. We still have the same problem tomorrow, would you believe? Tomorrow morning, the steam train comes through on the, on the main line and blows all the smoke in here. And then what it does, it comes back at night and does it again. What's about it, right? We're not here. I'm sure on the day it's a bit of a problem. Keep your eyes on the, the tunnel ceiling there, guys. You're going to see a footbridge there. That's the cold air that's coming through. That's where this is coming from, as well, these four flash headlines. So what they are is when they built the um, the tunnel for the inside 1890, they used these to all the All the tools are connected. So if you imagine, it's like Mickey Mouse's head. So it's the Mickey Mouse's head, 
that the line turns to right to the side up there, and there's two left ears, and these two tools here. They're all no dead, they're not working, not going to be too much lines out in the 1960s. But we do need to do That's four. That's so Kevin knows which way to go, that. If it's upside down, we've capsized. What you see up there, the head where the arrow is seen is that he is, uh, our blue ribbon. Now these arches are put in for purpose. They were put in the late, late 1880s and they were put there to reinforce the sun seal of the walls. Because they were 1890 they were building the sun seal on the right hand side. Now what you notice, they missed a bit, they picked a bit, they missed a bit. And that was the same money. Now this sun is only a third line, as you see now. We've got the jack and all this stuff here. A third bit is actually concrete, because in the restoration of rock falls and they pinned uh, steel bars and mesh up against the walls and concrete over it. But the other third is that. That's the real sort of seal as you see there now. That's the 630 foot of above your head. And when you get further in the tunnel, that's all you see. Thank you. 